Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the Airport Extreme Base Station administration that's built into OS X Server. Now because Apple builds Server and they build uh, Airport Extreme Base Stations, they've integrated those into the OS X Server service. So if you're using a different router, router other than one of Apple's, you won't see this uh, in the sidebar. You won't have this service available to you, and you'll have to open all the ports and things manually. And we've talked about that throughout uh, our uh, series on server. Uh, but because uh, if you do have an Apple uh, router, you get this uh, service that's built in here. And I just want to walk through a few of the things that you can do uh, with this service so that you get an idea of how you can administer your Airport Extreme Base Station uh, within server. Now, one of the things we've talked about before is the importance of opening ports in order for your uh, services here to operate outside your network. And so with most of the services we've gone through, we've made sure that we check to make sure that those ports are opened. And so, like I said, if you uh, have a, a router that's other than an Apple router, you've been doing that manually. If not, a uh, server's been doing it for you. And the beauty of opening ports inside of server service here is the fact that uh, it doesn't restart the router. So when you actually open a port, uh, the router itself doesn't have to restart. It actually just opens the port for you uh, with its uh, connect together because because it's connected to uh, your Airport Extreme Base Station. So in here you can see the various services that server has opened. And then you see a few other ones that I've opened myself. And so if you want to create a um, your own port, you want to do some port forwarding uh, and use the server interface, you simply just go in and click the plus here. And then you add a service. And so it has uh, built-in services already here. You can see there are a couple more services that are built into server that I haven't opened ports for yet. Uh, Mail, which is a service that I'm not using, and then SSH, which I'm not using either uh, with my home server here. Uh, but I can also uh, select other here. And just by selecting other, it allows me to type in the service name and the port that I want to open, and then just click add. A very simple interface that allows me to add these various services and do it uh, pretty easily. Uh, let me just show you. If I go over to the airport utility for a minute here, and let's just go over to our network. Uh, inside uh, here, normally I'd have to come into the port settings here. I'd have to click the plus button here. You see I get a, a little bit of a different interface here. I'd have to, uh, you know, I could type in a des uh, description of what I'm doing, then I put in all of the ports. It, it has a lot more for me that to, to have to interact with in order to open that port. And then that information would show up right here. And then I'd have to click update and it would restart the router. And so then I'd have to wait for it to restart to come back and, and have everything up and running again. So the beauty of doing it right inside of server is you basically just put this in and then server opens the port for you and everything's taken care of. Uh, to give you an idea, here's a port that I've opened myself if, uh, right here. Uh, you can see I've got a few of them that are in here. Uh, now, I can't go in and edit them afterwards. That's the only thing. I don't have, you know, if I double click on it, I can't edit uh, these. I can do, all I have to do is I'd have to take them out by clicking the minus, and then I have to go back in and add the service again. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you've, when you've added those in there. But again, a very simple interface, not too difficult uh, to understand, but just wanted to show you that so that you uh, can administer uh, your ports and public services right inside here, inside the server application. Now, another uh, feature of having your an Airport Extreme base station by Apple is that you can uh, use it to configure a RADIUS service with your wireless network. Now, RADIUS stands for Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. And so what that means is that rather than having users uh, use a general SSID and password to get onto your wireless network, instead what you can do is require a username and password in order to log into the network, and then your server would then authenticate based on the users you have here to determine whether that person can log onto your network or not. So it's a much more secure uh, situation because you're using Kerberos and, and all of the security features to log in as opposed to a general SSID. Now, for home users, it's probably not as critical uh, because you are just in your home network, so you pretty much know uh, who might have access to uh, your SSID and password. It's going to be a limited number of people. Uh, in a business, it gets a little more complicated because you have people coming and going. You've got employees that were there, and now they're not there. And so you might want to, you might be more concerned with keeping your uh, your network more secure. 
Uh, the other thing, too, is that when someone leaves or they have a password, then you've got to change the password protocol again because you don't want that person on your network anymore and they have your password. Whereas this way, if it's just a user, you create a user account, and then when the person leaves, you basically delete the user account and they don't have access. Or you can even leave the account and just remove access to, uh, to your network. Uh, so it does give you a little bit more flexibility that way when you're trying to manage things. So what I want to do is show you how to set up this, uh, this Radius service and how you can do it and how simple it is to do in the server app. Uh, before I do that, let me just pull up the uh, airport utility again one more time. Uh, we're going to come in, here to the, uh, come in here to the wireless area here. And you notice that I've got uh, WPA Personal here for my security. I've got my password here. If I were just to click this drop down, you see that I have the option to add Enterprise to it if I want to. And if I were to click on Enterprise here, you can see it tells me to configure Radius. And if I were to click on that, I get this drop down now that basically uh, has the primary IP of the server, which is, is my you know, personal home server here. Uh, and then it's got a shared secret that's primary and then verify, and then it has the primary port, you know, 1812 there, that it would use for the service. Uh, you can also set up a secondary RADIUS server. If you've got more than one server, you're in a corporate environment doing that, you can set that up here as well and do that manually. But this is how you would set it up in your airport uh, utility if you weren't using the server app. I'm just going to cancel this here uh, because I'm not going to do that. And let me just cancel the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to say don't update and let's just close airport utility. So the easier way for me to do it, since I have OS 10 server, is just to check this box here that says require username and password login over Wi-Fi. And then I need to restart the airport. Now, it's important to understand that when you do this, uh, the airport utility can't be open. If, if the utility is open, it's just going to hang on you. So you want to make sure that you shut that down. That's why I shut that down uh, just a second ago. Uh, but what you do is this is the one time you do need to restart your airport. Now, understand when you do this, everybody's going to get kicked off your wireless network uh, because now they're going to be required to put in a username and password in order to, uh, to actually make that work. And you can see how it kind of timed out here because I didn't click it soon enough. So I'm just going to hit this again, and I'm going to say Restart Airport. And it's going to start applying the settings now and restart my uh, airport base station. So what I'm going to do is let it do that. And then when it's done, I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like uh, with a screen share uh, to actually uh, show you what it looks like to log in. Okay, here we are over on the other computer on a screen share. And you can see I've got Wi-Fi off right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the airport on. And it's going to attempt to connect to my network. And you see right away it's going to ask for my username and password for me to connect to the network. So I need to put that information in, and I'll be all connected. And then click OK to join. And so that connects me to the network now and allows me to have access uh, to the Wi-Fi. So that's how it works. It's pretty simple on how that's set up and uh, makes, it, uh, makes it so that your users have to authenticate in order to use the Internet connection on your Wi-Fi, on your wireless. So now let's go back to the, uh, to the server for a minute, and we can wrap up. Okay, that gives you an idea of how the RADIUS service works. So one more thing before we go. Uh, I did find an application uh, over on the Mac App Store, uh, Admin Tool uh, RADIUS, which is put together to help you uh, administer RADIUS inside OS X Server. And just gives you a, a kind of a different interface and a different way of looking at it. Uh, it's $1.99. It does say for Mountain Lion, uh, but I've been able to get it to work with uh, Mavericks as well. So uh, let me just put this down. Let's pull up that application just so you can see what it looks like. And so this is what the application looks like. And so basically you put in your server address. And so I'm just going to use my local server here and log in and click Connect. And so it's connected to my server. And you can see it sees my airport base station right here, and it's got my uh, secret on here so that I can see that as well. So it just gives me an idea of what's happening with, uh, with my various devices. If you've got more than one uh, network access server, all of your access servers will show on here. And it'll give you kind of a quick way of uh, taking a look at that stuff. Uh, you can also come in, and if you got other servers here, you can see you got your different certificates. You've got... Uh, that, that information, uh, all of that will show up there. You can add uh, other uh, network access servers as well if you want to. And you can see the different types. If you've got uh, Cisco or one of those, it'll help you to actually configure those things inside of server, uh, which is great because if you've got an outside one that you're not using an airport base station, it just gives you an easy way for you to be able to, uh, to configure that. Uh, you can see up here it's got your uh, basically your log file so you can see how well things are going. 
uh, and go back into the settings. And then after you make your changes, you can save it uh, or you can actually turn it off as well if you wanted to. Uh, just by clicking the off button here, uh, I can turn that turn that information off. Again, this is working with my um, uh, airport. Uh, it's working through the server app itself, so it's not going to give me much there. But if you're looking at configuring other types of servers, this is a great application to use for that. Uh, because uh, that way you can do it without having to go through the terminal. It'll do all that stuff for you in the background. So let me just uh, put that down. So that's all I've got for this week uh, on uh, airport administration through server application. Hopefully that helps you get up and running. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.